fiction, science fiction, horror, fantasy, crime, LGBT, thriller. You have now entered the house of mystery. With your hosts, Eric Shapiro, David North Martino, John Copenhaver, and Al Warren. Good on FM Los Angeles. 102.3 FM Riverside. And 1050 AM Palm Springs. Welcome back into the House of Mystery. And I'm Al Warren. Who else would I be? And we've got Mr. John Copenhaver. Hey, Al. How you doing? I'm well, you know, I've already given you my list of woes. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to bring down the audience. I mean, it's, uh, you know, they, if they watch the news, that'll be enough. Never mind hearing about me. Um, but I'm over COVID. That is something to celebrate. But I will say one thing. I still cannot smell or taste. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. I'm in my fifth week and, uh, I'm pretty much over all the aches and pains and all the problems, but there's still nothing. Um, I grind coffee, you know, and not a thing. Yeah, I didn't have that problem. I just have like a ringing in my ears that I decided that COVID decided to give me. So <laughs> it gives everyone something special. I think that ringing was happening before, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and that rattle, or that was the rattle, not a ring. Sorry. Rattle. <laughs> well, so you've got a you've got a great guest for us today. My God, this is fantastic. So um, let's just jump right in because this is exciting. Um, so let's welcome to the show Yasmin Ongo. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, y'all. I appreciate it. Yasmin, how did you write such great novels? Like what happened? Where Where did this come from? My imagination. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you see, I, I, I it's, this is really important. I got to figure out how to do this because you see, I want to do what I want to do this right. So I'm gonna, I'm, you need to give me all the advice. How can I write such great novels as you do? Like, what, what am I doing here? Oh so gosh, I explain this step by step. I got my pen out. Uh-huh. Let's, let's Good teach craft class, yeah. Me. Yeah, let's this, just this do a quick class <laughs> on how, how to write. I didn't, I didn't make my like lesson plan and stuff. So this is a little, you know, right on the off oh the cuff. God. Um, I mean, Shocking. you're so funny. <laughs> Y'all are funny. I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I appreciate you, Al, for saying that. Like, that's a really big compliment, and I appreciate it. But honestly, it's just, it was just a story that was had that had been churning in my head for a long time and uh and I just wanted to incorporate the things that I love which are action thrillers and crime thrillers and like John Wick-esque kind of you know um you know stories and things like that um and make it you know re- so re- you know wrap and I have a very big imagination. I spent a lot of time alone, and so, <laughs> so that's pretty much what it was. <laughs> well, um, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. we, well, we'll leave that one for for the X-rated version of the show. Okay. Um, no, but, I, I, but when you said that, okay, so you say this, um, the story um, just kind of stayed in your mind, and over and over, and that. Um, so maybe explain that to people, people that don't write. Um, how do you describe that uh, in essence? So you've kind of got this this okay. character and, and kind of like what you were saying, these different pieces and a story in your mind, and you won't forget it. See, because most people, when you talk to them, you know, they think about something and then they forget right. it the next day, right? But you, you've got this going on and on and on. So what, what, what how do you describe that then? Yeah. People? Well, so back in, you know, when I w- really started thinking about Nina and definitely the character came first because I, I was like, you know, I really want to write about this like fierce, you know, woman. Um, and I wanted to incorporate my culture. My family is from Ghana. And so I wanted to incorporate that in there. And I was like, and how do I do that? Um, and what I was seeing on TV and um, even in books, I really wasn't reading stories that, 
you know, featured uh, people who looked like me, women who looked like me um, and who were the ones doing the saving. They were always the ones that were being saved. They were always the love interest or they were the girl Fridays, you know, the one who feeds all the information to the male protagonist who saves the day. And so I was like, you know, I don't see what I want to see, which is, you know, me or just women in general doing all these like fantastic things. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and write one. And so I knew I wanted this um, female character. I knew she wanted to, I wanted her to have a job that wasn't something that, you know, most people would, uh, you know, um, expect from her. Uh, I wanted it to be a, a, sh- a job that was really, you know, like, oh my gosh, how could anybody want to be an assassin when she didn't really want to be an assassin? She just kind of, uh, chose it because that's what she needed for her. Um, and so that's why that story really like stuck to me because I, I really wanted to write something that I would, I was writing for me, right? And I wanted to write something that I knew that I would just like totally devour as a reader that I loved and incorporated all of these things that I loved. And that story just kind of, um, came from that. Yeah, but who is it that you want to assassinate? <laughs> well, I can't <laughs> tell you that. <laughs> no, no, but in 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 a general mm-hmm. theme, mm-hmm. when you say so, so you've got this character, yeah. you know, and, and you got the idea, and you want her to be this this like you said, John Wick, this sort of person that's going to go out there and save the day, so to speak, mm-hmm. just make things right. Mm-hmm. But is there something that you? I'm just trying to see if you do. Do you get this every day in the world? Is it something you see in the world every day that you wish you could re- solve it in that way? Is that, it like, would you want this character mm-hmm. to be real and in the real world today? I would want her to be real because I think that she she is more than just like you know the assassin that maybe people would imagine her to be uh she's a very deep person and um there are very many layers to her she doesn't kill um just because you know what i mean there's a reason and she has a code and um there are rules to to why she has you know marks people she goes after for her job and things like that and i'm not saying that i want anybody to go out and do that let's you know put that out there right now um but what i what i did want was to write a character who was um she was very much secure in who she is um, and in her job choice. And I wanted a strong character who doesn't matter what she does. And there are so many people who have all these jobs and people judge them and look down on them and, and things like that. And, you know, they have to have, you have to have pride in what you do because you do what you do. You chose it or, or not, but you have pride in it. And I, and she has pride in what she does because she does it well. Not necessarily that she does this thing, but that she does it well. And so, you know, as a woman, sometimes, you know, we have to have jobs that we don't like. And, you know, if we're powerful women in the work, Field, people think things of us, you know, that we're a bitch or, you know, that we're cold hearted. They ask us to smile. And, and so my character doesn't really like to smile. And so that's really I, what I really wanted was for her to embody this, you know, powerful, um, strong, uh, successful and secure woman who, uh, you know, was very proud of how well she does her job and that she can compartmentalize and she can take care of business and then she could still, you know, be all those things that she needs to be at the time that she needs to be them. So, and sure, there are people that I'm mad at that in my head, I'm like, man, if, you know, I'm going to write you in my book, you know? So, um, so I mean, sure, there, there were people that I was mad at. And, and a lot of the themes that are in the book are things that were going on in my life at that time, too. So, but I just, you know, wrote them in a different way um, and, you know, took care of them in a different way. That was like my therapy. So that's a long answer for your, for your question. My, so. No, that's all right. That's right. You know, John, John calls me a bitch, too. And tells me. <laughs> Do you, John? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's saying smile. Only off the air, though. (laughs) Um, No, you know, one question I have, um, you know, I I write mystery fiction, but it is, I I don't, I would not say that my characters are particularly physical. um, And I'm always in admiration of being able to write physicality with, 
you know, a lot of grace and poise. You do that so well. And um, I'm just, you know, I'm curious about, I guess it's a two part question. One is just, you know, how do you get good at writing something like that? And I think the other part of the question is, do you feel that sort of having, you know, a strong female character, not just one that is strong in her, uh, sort of emotional self and her intellectual self, but also physical as part of your in- endeavor with writing these kinds of thrillers. So how I write that, I, I study a lot in terms of, you know, that I will, whatever I'm reading, I'm, I'm, pay- I'm paying special attention to anything physical that they're doing and how they, you know, have, you know, action scenes and fights. And I also wanted, um, with her physicality, it to be uh, true to, to who she is and, you know, true to like what I really believe. And I like a fantastical story too, but my character isn't going to leap from building to building and do all of that (laughs) stuff. You know what I mean? So she's going to have some sort of like, I'm like, okay, girl, we're not going to do that. Right. We're going to leave that to Jason Bourne. But, um, but, but what she is going to do and what, what her strength is, I had to decide, okay, what is going to be her strength? Her strength is going to be more, you know, hand to hand combat because then she can maybe take on, you know, someone who's a little bit bigger because she knows these like different fighting moves. And then I have a friend who, um, she's like a black belt in martial arts. And so I'll ask her, you know, if I want to, you know, hit someone, you know, and get, you know, have them just fall to the ground or whatever, what can I do? What, injuries can I inflict? What inside, you know, body part can I really hurt that just brings them down? And so she'll talk, you know, me through whatever she's done maybe in her class. And, you know, I'll ask her to say it again and I'll write it like word for word. And then I'll just kind of like envision it and try it myself in the room. So it looks very weird if someone were to pass by and see me actually trying to like do these things and and I do do that and sometimes I even enlist my kids like I think there was a um a scene in in um the second book and it um I think Nina had like a gun to her head or something like that and I actually went and got my child and was like can you put a gun to my or you put your finger to my head and I want to see if I can do this move to get you you know away from me and my kid I guess is just so used to it she was just like okay and so she just came and there she is I'm on my knees and she's got her her hand to me like a gun and so I like will act it out and just try to see if that makes sense and then I'll write it does that answer your question? I don't know. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. I think that's that's really interesting. It's sort of like it feels like yeah. it's sort of two part or one one you're, um, lo- you know, looking at what's going on with other writers and how they achieve it, but also that you sort mm-hmm. of walk through it physically. Um, that makes a lot of sense to me, honestly. Yeah, yeah, because I have to understand it. I can't write it if I don't understand how it actually happens, you know, the the mechanisms of how it might work. And I also, you know, anytime some action scene or fight scene comes up on TV, I'm looking at that and I'm stopping and rewinding it and, you know, trying to see how they do things and how would I word, you know, this thing that they do. I, I A lot of times I'm trying to figure out how to describe a certain move, you know, because I don't necessarily know what those moves are are called and so so it's it's a lot of that it takes a little bit of the fun out but then once it all comes together you know then y'all tell me that it's okay and i'm like okay who i landed that thank goodness i i I think the truth probably is that uh yasmin actually goes out on the street dressed in leather and black and Mm -hmm. and and actually attacks people I do, I do actually and just to see you know she actually is the stand-in for queen latifah right yeah, yeah, on the equalizer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Um, well, so so the main character, a lot of writers, fiction writers, will say that there there are a lot of themselves in that main character, and and they write a lot of things that either they'd like to be or that they are, or maybe things that they don't like about themselves. Like you hear all sorts of stories like that. So what's your relationship with your main character? So she's definitely all the things that, um, that I'm not. Um, and she like being physical, like, you know, she likes to, you know, work out and, and train and stuff like that. And I don't like to do that stuff. Um, and she's very, she's much more, um, brave than I am because I, I definitely would run the other way, um, in face of a lot of things that she 
she goes through. Um, the one or the couple things that we will, sh- that we do share have to do with food because I, I made her a foodie and she loves lemon pepper wings and uh, bacon cheeseburgers and chocolate milkshakes. And those are the things that I love. So those are the things that Nina and and I share. Um, and I'm proud to say that. But everything else is just stuff that, oh, I think she would be. These are the things that I find really awesome about, you know, women in general and women who can like do all these like athletic things and uh, women who aren't afraid to just really take things by the whole, you know, by the reins and, and like, you know, solve solutions and make solutions and things like that. So, um, yeah, that's Tina in a nutshell, Nina and me. So now in, in book one, her name is Knight. Um, you tackle human trafficking and, and, mm-hmm. and have that as a main theme in the book. Um, did you do a lot of research in that area or did you have to or what did what did what did you discover in in researching that book that maybe surprised you right so in researching it what my um what am I think? What am I trying to say? What I thought, you know, happened, you know, with human trafficking and and how, you know, people ended up being taken and things like that were things that I just really didn't know. Like you never really know. And I still don't know. And so what one big thing that I learned that was just so amazing to me and I just couldn't believe it is, you know, the fact that it could be it could be anybody and it could be right next door um, and you would never know it. Right. Um, they look so innocuous and they are so like, you know, pleasant, some of them or, or whatever. And then you wouldn't know that there's a trafficking situation happening. Um, and and that was something that was very scary to me because you just don't know who you're living next door to. Um, and that's something that I learned. And, and so another part of the research was and what stayed with me. I had, I was, you know, teaching or in, yeah, I was still teaching and I went to a, a, one of these uh, teaching conferences. It was in Chicago. And one of the sessions that they had were from survivors of uh, sex trafficking and, and things like that and uh, sex workers. And they were talking about their stories and they were talking about, you know, how it all happened for them and how they survived it and, and what and how they're thriving now. And I found their stories of survival and how, you know, beautiful they are and how strong they are and, and, and are able to talk about all these things that happened to them and use that as, you know, a teaching, a teachable moment rather than you have, have that be something that just kept them ashamed or, or whatever the case. And that's, you know, really when I knew like I would, I want to really highlight and celebrate how these people survived and and how they were able to just really undergo all of these things that, you know, people just didn't even pay attention to because they were just right next door and they just, you know, didn't give them a second thought. Um, and so those are the things that I really, in my research, uh, discovered and, and was amazed at how strong they are, um, how they're strengthened in surviving all of that. And I tried to um embody that in in Nina as she's going through those struggles none of their stories are in mine um because i don't specifically remember like their stories but but just their their spirit if that makes any sense and and their sur- their will to survive and and their will to not let that thing be the thing that kills them if that makes any sense that they're going to survive it and and be better for it and and reimagine their lives in the way that they want it after they've gotten out of it so that that's what i took from all of that research but it, i know what you're saying because um, you're talking to the people, or if you're interviewing people or reading about them, it, you certainly understand what they've been through, and it's it's just amazing how they can um, find that uh, strength, that inner yeah. will to get through it all, and to not only survive but to go on in living uh, a good life. Like exactly, that, that's the, I find that amazing, and my when I see that. So when someone takes takes home one of these two books and reads it. Um, I'm guessing you have a subtext or quite a, uh, there's a message that you want them to get that's underneath all of the action and adventure and, and heartfelt stuff about 
important things like trafficking and stuff. I'm guessing, but do you actually put in a subtext or have a message for people? I don't know that I have a message. I I definitely had different themes that I wanted to explore, um, and it's very heavy in in the story. Besides, you know, her her growth um, and her surviving her survivorship, I should say. Um, you know, there's it's heavy on family, right? Uh, because family was important to me, and you know, and the thought of you know your your family that you're born into versus the family that you choose, your found family, and how important that is. Sometimes the people that we find and bring into our lives are more um, important and are more, you know, uh, we have more love for them than the people that, you know, we are born into, right? Because we can't choose who we're born into. Um, And so I explored that. And then father-daughter relationships and, you know, relationships between siblings and 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 also very much so the the whole idea uh, behind the tribe, the organization that she works for, you know, I wanted to make the message. If, I, if we're going to say that I had a message, definitely the message is that um, people from Africa are not, you know, the stereotypes that everyone typically sees um, in in all sorts of literature and in history and things like that. We are definitely a people that are like everyone else and we don't consider ourselves like third world or whatever and and uh we are rich people with with rich you know resources in our lands and and so that's definitely what I wanted to to show and that was the message is that there are so many things there are so many people um in this continent of Africa um that everyone should get to know and see all of these different things we are not just these you know things that are projected out there. So that might be the message, but everything else, all those other themes are definitely things that I was exploring because I was trying to figure that out for myself as well. So the book two is called They Come at Night. Mm -hmm. Um, What's the theme of this? You were talking a little bit about that. I guess you're talking about the tribes and, and, and protecting the family and stuff. They Come at Night, the theme that moves, it's still, you know, um, a community. It's still, you know, a tribe, you know, the whole who do you surround yourself with and and who are your loyalties to. And so in the first one, in the first book, it's very much more like getting to know Nina. I think I consider it like her origin story. And so you find out how she became this, you know, assassin and all of these different elements around her. And with um, a group, an organization like the tribe, with the, what they're trying to do, which is to you know, to really uphold the the people of the African diaspora and to make them the ones who become rich off of their resources that are cultivated from their land, that just kind of trickles into, you know, book two and then book three. So they're trying to do this wonderful thing for their people. And of course, there are going to be, you know, other factions that don't necessarily share that same vision. And so that's what kind of leads into uh, book two is, these factions um, that, you know, don't align with what Nina and her family are are thinking for for the people of the Af- what they want to do in their in their ventures. And so people are coming literally at the Knight family and at Nina and she has to figure out how to to save them all and keep the tribe and its overall vision, the good of their vision going. When you sat down and started writing this, did you have all three books already outlined? Is that kind of how you put it together? No, I didn't. When I first started writing um, Her Name is Night, it really was going to be uh, just that one book. Um, And then as, you know, I was talking to my agent and even as I was writing it towards the end, I was like, man, there's just so much story that I can tell with Nina. I just really fell in love with her, her character and and also the people that um, surround her. I loved all of the characters and I just didn't want to be done with them. So we we asked if it could be, you know, like a two book or actually Thomas and Mercer asked us if it could be two books. And I said, oh, sure. I said, but I think if I'm going to do two, I think maybe three is a better arc for me because I can focus. That's when I started thinking first one is a focus on her and, and her coming about. Second one is a focus on, you know, who's coming after the tribe and the Knight family. And the third is a, you know, a focus on, um, 
like out like um I I don't I don't want to break but you know even a bigger version of like who is um trying to you know people who are trying to really take down um the things that the tribe is is doing so we get a little bit more of the tribe in each of the books and more so in the third you really get to see kind of how they work and you see Nina in a different position than she was in books 2 and and 3 so there's like a definite growth for her um and in through her growth you see everything else that's coming about well that's interesting you know what's your favorite part of writing it used to be the actual creating of it until I had deadlines <laughs> and deadlines <laughs> suck, suck the soul out of creating for me. So now it's revising because then that pressure of, you know, creating this thing by deadline and making this word count by deadline is, um, is off my head. And when I'm revising, then I can go and really make it polished and shine the way I, I'd like it to be. Um, you know, I'm curious that you said, of course, that you wrote this book because you felt like you weren't seeing this character and this sort of situation and things that you read. I'm curious though, I'm sure you still had influences mm -hmm. and things that you read. You felt like you were kind of reaching through who are your sort of, uh, I guess, literary heroes or, um, heroines as it may be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. So I really like, um, James Patterson's Alex Cross. Though that, when I started to read Alex Cross, that's when I really was like, oh, okay, you know, there's this, you know, black FBI investigator and, you know, he is just really doing all these things. And that was my first time that I really saw, you know, a, a black person in that kind of role. And I really, really love, you know, that whole entire series. Um, so, so Alex Cross and then Walter Mosley, his books are just, you know, prolific i just love that um eleanor taylor bland i love her stories because she has that you know investigator or detective but the detective is you know a, a single black mom of a son and so that kind of resonated with me um there's you know tony morrison and I love a Stephen King. So I love horror. And <laughs> I know that he, you know, that's not necessarily the same genre, but I, I absolutely love Stephen King and his writing and, uh, his craft. And I, and I, I really try to like, it, you know, envision that and like embody that when I'm writing because I just think he's so prolific. There's just so many, there's just so many people. So I don't know, like I, I gave you some names, but it could change anytime. It's just whoever is, is on my mind, uh, Octavia Butler with sci-fi. So I read across the, the gamut, right? And so it's just, um, I just love everybody. I love you guys too. Hello. <laughs> You're supposed to start out with the hosts. <laughs> yes, you're right. You're right. <laughs> oh, you guys' books. You know, well, that's fine. No, that's all right. It's all good. I'm waiting for John's second one. Like, what? I can't wait. The next one? Yeah. Yes. Uh, speaking of deadlines and, and you know, uh, fighting fighting through wanting to love a thing while it's on deadline, it's an interesting uh, – mine's a little bit uh, a uh, – a deadline I've created for myself to a certain degree, but it, mm -hmm. I needed to do that because um, I take too long to write books. So I admire yeah. your ability to, you know, get it done. I got to get it done. <laughs> get her done. Uh, listen, I, only because they put that deadline on me and it's been like a book a year and, you know, I don't want anyone to take the money back. So I have to, but <laughs> if I could have a little bit more time, then I definitely would have taken that. <laughs> so... <laughs> So you you uh, you love horror fiction, which I don't think I knew that. So I'm curious, would you ever, you know, down the road a bit, um, want to write a horror story, or is that purely a, a love from a reader standpoint? No, I would absolutely like to write a horror story. I just am terrified that I it won't be as good as the ones that are out there. Like I want, if I write a horror story, I want to like truly terrify people. And, and so like, I, I, but I know I have it in me. I just, it's just something I, I really, really love. I want to be scared and, and I want to, um, to do that for the reader as well. So yeah, maybe down the line, I, I would, I have a, um, a short story that I wrote that was horror. And so I'm, I'm always thinking about whether I will expand that or, or not. I don't know what I'll do, but definitely. 
Well, I like the idea. So, you know, not, hey. <laughs> not, not that you do it for me, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, are you, are you trailing more in the suspense horror type idea or something more gory? Um, no, I, it doesn't have to be gory because I think like, you know, the horror to me is in the anticipation and the whole, you know, um, you know, the whole like build up and, and lead up to this thing that's the monster or whatever. It doesn't, it definitely doesn't have to be like Freddy or, or anything like that. Though, you know, a little bit of that is okay, you know, for, for shock factor, um, and everything. But yeah, I, I definitely like to keep, um, the reader in suspense and have that anticipation, like building to the point, like they're just going to burst. That's what I want. Explode. People to burst. They explode. Yeah. <laughs> explode. Just yeah. like that. Well, I see. With the <laughs> um, well, so, so what is it for uh, Yasmin in the day? Like what, what do you do um, in your writing day? Can you plan plan this out and go, okay, well, I've got nobody around from 10 to 2 for the next four days, so I'm going to sit and write, and can you turn it on at 10 and turn it off at 2 type thing? Or does there have to be a certain mood or feeling um, that's associated with the writing and, and you can't always do it then? Yeah, that's a great question. There definitely has to be a mood um, because I can tell myself I'm going to start writing at nine in the morning and I tell myself that every day and I might not really start to write until 11, 12 o'clock because by then I feel like, okay, I have something I, you know, need to write um, and I'm feeling it and I don't write in order. So, you know, I write by scene. And so it's whatever, whatever I'm feeling at that moment, that's what I'm going to write. Um, and whatever's churning in my mind, a lot of times I'll wake up to something that's in my mind that, okay, this is what I'll probably write today. But like I said, I won't start it right at nine o'clock because I'm, I'm a mom and wife and stuff like that. And so I've got to do family things. Apparently, that's what they tell me. And so I have to get all of them off. And so when I get all of them off, then I have to like ground myself in the writing. And so it takes me a minute. Um, and John, you said, you know, you, it takes you a long time to write stuff. It takes me a long time to get to the writing at period. Um, I, I'm a long thinker and then a faster writer. So I really have to go through the story. And even when I'm like waking up to that scene that I mentioned to y'all, I'm thinking about that for those couple of hours that I'm not actually writing and really sussing it out in my head before I actually put it, you know, down on. And sometimes I'll do longhand. Um, I prefer longhand, but sometimes I don't have time for that. So then I'll type it up. It's really interesting. I think that part of the writing process is preparing to write. Um, like it, it's weird. It's like our minds have to get have to get them in gear before we can get to the page. Or at least I find that to be the case. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, but when you say waking up to the scenes, are you? Do you hear your characters in 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 your head? Do you hear the voices? Oh, yes, definitely. They have full conversations with each other um, and telling the story. I, I see the scenes playing out in my head like, you know, like a movie. Um, and I just write what I see, but I have to see the whole thing um, out right. before I write So it. you're not waking up in yeah. the middle of the night with like a shovel in your hand and <laughs> muddy shoes. <right? laughs> No, sometimes I do. No, no, I, I do wake up in the middle of the night. Um, and, but I'll, you'll see if you, if I'm caught wake, awake at the middle of the night, um, it's with my phone and I'm like furiously typing an email to myself uh, because that's the thing. That's what I do. I type an email to myself with this, whatever it is that just played out in my head and trying to remember that, um, that feel of it so that I can come back to it the, you know, later on when it's an appropriate time. But, you, yeah. you, you know those really dark, heavy sheer curtains. Um, you must the have blackout. those. Yeah, yeah, the blackout. You must have them around your house because the neighbors would be thinking, "Oh my God, what's going on over there?" Right. 
Right, right. No, I don't. I don't. We just have blinds. But yeah, you would think like neighbors or, or you know, my husband, he might wake up you like, why are you up at three o'clock? He, I think he's used to it. He doesn't, he just rolls over and ignores me and, and I'm here trying to hide the light um, and everything. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's a thing. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. know. She's on her knees and the kid's got it like, looks like a gun she's to her head. I <laughs> A gun to her head, yeah. Like, what's what was that about? Like, that would have been funny. What's going on over there? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Well, the pandemic must have been really um, difficult in a sense, too, because if you're a little bit sensitive to what's going on in your life, as in when you write, and you've got to be in Mm -hmm. a certain mood. Because I know a lot of writers we've talked to, the uh, all the stress – you know, the anxiety of not only the pandemic, but people's reactions to it and all of the stuff that was going on and, and that. Did that, that affect trying to do, um, book number two? Yeah, it really did. It was, it was really hard because, like you said, everybody was home and, and family doesn't necessarily, uh, though they know you're a writer and stuff, but like they they really don't know what that means. They just think, oh, you're just sitting at the desk so I can come talk to you. Um, even when they see that you're hard, you know, at typing something away, they want to come talk to you and ask you, you know, questions like where's the catch up and all of that. Um, and so there was a lot of that. Um, and it was hard. And so a lot of my writing had to take place, you know, when everyone was asleep and I knew that nobody was going to come and bother me for a chunk of time. So, um, and it, it slowed the process down, but, you know, like I said, I had deadlines and I had to get it done. So I, I pushed it off as long as I could and then came down to the wire and then finally I just had to make myself yeah, do the thing. Yeah. But sometimes I think that works because I felt that and I've, I've done that and it's yeah. turned out to be good. Um, but, uh, but do you think that, um, the stress around you and things like that, like pandemic and you got all these things going on, do you think that'll seep into your writing somehow? You think it makes it a little darker? Mm. I uh, personally, I no, think that I a lot so. of writers, I think it, it, it will come into the writing, but they won't necessarily see mm-hmm. it now. It's something you'll look back mm-hmm, at mm-hmm. in 10 years and you'll kind of maybe see it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe if I wrote something else, but like um, Nina was dark to begin with. It's a dark story. And so I had to stick with that vibe. So it's hard for me to know whether. And I don't think that the the second book is darker than the first. So um, I would have to write. I would have had to have written something else to see how how dark if I if if I got any darker or whatever the case may be, if my feelings from the pandemic really kind of bled themselves um, onto the pages. But um, luckily I was, you know, I had to stay on brand with, with the darkness and with the killings and stuff like that. So it wasn't any different to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, hey, you know, I just, I, it, it'll make it. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. You know? <laughs> I mean, we'll good see. Con- contrast. I mean, you could contrast it. I mean, I know some writers we talked to thought maybe it was sort of, a, they went a little lighter mm-hmm. because <laughs> they're like, um, it, yeah, it's so dark in the world. So I'm not going to write and not going to write in that space. I mean, I know you're writing dark stuff and you have to, you do have to stay on brand, but it's interesting sort of how people have reacted. Um, I, I don't, think it really made much difference to me either Mm -hmm. but um i just in fact it's i think writing is a nice place to go Mm -hmm. to avoid all the other stuff Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. (laughs) well i i find that i tend to have less um sympathy for the bad people in what i write Mm -hmm. but i'm writing true stories Um, so maybe I, I, I think that it can be darker for me. What comes, what comes next? So you've got book three, but then where are you going to go after, after the third book is, is, is out and complete? Yeah. So after the third book, I have one more with Thomas and Mercer. Um, and that's going to be a standalone. So I have to think about what kind of story I want to write there. That'll be interesting. It'll be like a palate cleanser for me because I'm not going to be in the world of Nina. Um, and I'm a little, I'm excited about it, but I'm also a little nervous, uh, because I definitely want to deliver. Um, and, and I don't have like the full story in my mind. I just have little bits and pieces. And so I'm in the process of my long thinking, um, to get that synopsis to them and hopefully something that they're going to be 
happy with so that I can start writing it. But I think they'll like it. I just got to make sure that it has like all the things that I want to put in it. So what do you think each book does for you? Like when you complete one of these books Mm -hmm. at the end of it and you look back, what do you, how do you think it changes you? Hmm. That's a good question. I don't think that I've like thought about it. I can't even say that it makes me feel more secure in my writing because I'm always insecure about my writing. That just won't stop. Um, But it makes me feel satisfied when I hear from readers when they email me or message me about how much they enjoyed the story. And when they talk to me about certain parts of the stories that really resonated with them, even parts that I have forgotten that I put in, um, that is what I think really makes it all worth it for me because I'm like, all I always, all I've ever wanted to do since I was a kid and reading these books and, and was taken away into all these different worlds um, was to have that same kind of effect on someone else and for someone else to be like, oh my gosh, I just loved this world that you took me to and these stories and, and all these emotions that you put me through. And so to have that finally come back and, and people tell me that, that to me is so gratifying. And I think that's my absolute favorite thing. You know, you were saying earlier how, um, how you had the story, you know, kind of like inside of you for a long time churning and that, um, was there a particular incident or something that happened that made you want to actually go from from it being inside you and inside your mind to actually putting it on paper and letting other people read it? And I say that um, especially because when you're writing stories like what you're doing, you're also putting a lot of your own soul into it. You're exposing a lot of your own vulnerability so to speak you're you're sort of letting letting the world see who right. you are in some parts so when it comes to that that's usually i find that to be a lot of courage for someone to do that when you actually do it and put it on paper and then publish yeah. it um what was there something that made you jump over that bridge or so jump off the to, to do yeah that? like i just had a total life change at that time um the time that actually, when I started thinking about Nina, I was, you know, my, I had recently lost my dad and, you know, my, my kids and I had moved to this new location and we didn't know anybody who lived, you know, in this town that we lived in, in South Carolina. So we had to go and, and find, you know, people who were going to like be our friends and things like that. And so that, that's the same kind of stuff that you see in that story and going through, you know, big major life changes and going through, you know, the loss of a parent and all that stuff that you see in that story were literally things that I was living through um, at that time. But it took me time to kind of go through that before I actually started writing. And I think I, I started really writing the story in 2018, end of 2018, early 2019. Um, but I started thinking about it as far back as um 2011 when my when my father passed so um what made me finally start to write it was I just wasn't feeling happy at the time I wasn't feeling settled and and y'all might you know feel me on this it's like when I don't write I don't feel settled I feel like really angsty and like I gotta get this thing out but I didn't know what I was you know I was teaching and then raising the kids and so there wasn't a lot of time for writing and I just really wasn't feeling myself and so finally I was like Yasmin you have to do this you just have to make a change and that change was pick up your writing again and you know get that out and um, and see how you feel then. And so it was very cathartic for me to to write this story and to write these feelings that I've had bottled up for all these years, you know, with the loss of my dad and all these other changes that were going on. And and so that, that's really the thing that, that sparked. I, I felt ready to tell the story in this particular way and to get out all these feelings that I was going through and all these experiences that I was living um, in this different way. You know, a lot of what makes a book good and, and definitely in your books are the, the characters being real, feeling real. That they, you know, they, they, they have the right, uh, emotion to them and stuff. Um, so in order to do that, um, how do you do that? 
and and I mean that not necessarily with the main character because that's someone you're relating to and someone that you have something you want to accomplish with, but the evil characters, the people that are bad, the ones that are having, um, they're they're in the book, they're in the story to create, you know, turmoil mm-hmm. and to hurt. How do you get in the heads and and do it and still? have it come out real because it's you know because these people are not what we think they are they're what you make them you know what i'm saying so uh, that's a tough thing to do and and i I, what's your secret yeah that's a tough thing that i don't i don't know what my secret is i just uh uh, all i all i know (laughs) all i know about (laughs) like you know writing about characters writing about villains especially is when I'm writing my my villains, I'm thinking, okay, to the villain, they are the hero, right? They are steadfast in their beliefs. They think they're right, um, and they have a reason for why they they're doing the thing that they do. And so, I don't necessarily write the villain to be a villain. I write the villain to be true to whatever their beliefs are and whatever it is that they're trying to accomplish for themselves. And through that comes their their badness i think because they're going to do the exact opposite of what you know nina and the rest of her team you know would do um to help people they don't want to help people they want to help themselves or they want to help a certain group of people that eventually just helps them you know what i mean and so that's how i think about it and i and i never try to write a villain that is all bad because i don't think that um that that's true you know to human nature i think even the baddest people have um or the worst people have you know a little bit of something that we can relate to so i also try to write you know people characters period but villains that are relatable in some way to uh to the reader so the reader may not be you know a killer or whatever but they might understand oh this person became a killer and is so angry because someone killed his mom or something like that you know what i mean and i can understand that feeling of wanting you know revenge because you know someone killed your mom or or something like that so i try to make something relatable to the reader so that they can so that they can empathize with the with the villain to a degree, but then they also want that villain to get like their comeuppance. Right. Yeah. Naughty girls need love too. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting. So, you know, you're a mother and, and you've got stuff going on and you're busy and you run out to the store and you're in the lineup and, and, and some nasty lady cuts you off in the lineup. Right. And she mm-hmm. buds right in and all that stuff. Now, do you take that woman and write her in your book and have her, like beaten and killed and all that too <laughs> <laughs> no not if not if it's just something that's going on in the store usually i just kind of <laughs> give her a dirty look and then i i'll get over it by the time i well i probably won't i'll probably talk about it a lot to myself and fuss all the way back home um and then get that all out but um but yeah no there's not i i really cannot I joke when I say that, oh, yeah, I'm going to write this person, like, write their death, because I really don't think of anyone in particular when I'm, like, writing about someone, you know, dying or a bad person or or anything. It's just um, maybe certain elements, I guess, of of people. So it's it's just bits and pieces of bad characteristics and traits that I pick from from people and even from myself you know and and then kind of create a person that way but yeah if I came across a person at the store or you know even like I sometimes I get some road rage you know I do have road rage a little bit and and you'll see me you know I'll be cursing in my car and you know I might flip a finger or something you know so I I get my aggression out that way (laughs) Oh, come on. Give us some real names here. Give us some <laughs> come on. What's going on? Like some of these bad characters. They're people you've got to have known, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I, no, I, I mean, I don't know. Well, maybe if there's only, if there's one, it may be my ex, my ex, but maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's the one that got set on fire, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So, so do you enjoy then 
in, uh, you know, interacting with the readers and people like that, do you like the Internet world? Are you into social media and all that? Do you uh, have a website and all this sort of stuff? And, and do people find you easily or, or are you hidden? No, I think they find me pretty easily. And I do, I am on social media, but I'm not like um, a big person to, you know, make videos and, and, you know, do all that stuff. Like that's not me. And I'm, a, I'm a big, um, I'll go and I'll like follow people and like, and I'll like, like what they're doing and stuff like that. So I'll be quiet that way. And then sometimes I'll, I'll post something. I'll agree with them, but like, you won't see too, too much from me because I just don't know what to say. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't know if it's really interesting to everyone else. But I do like interacting with with readers and um, with people who are on social. And so, like, if they, you know, sometimes they'll DM me on my um, on my author page on Facebook and I'll answer them or the, in, in IG, they'll, you know, message me and I'll answer, you know, their question or um, or anything like that, and they'll email me. So they'll go to my website and they'll email, and I, I'm writing them back and and stuff like that. So because I want to thank them for even taking the time, you know, they don't have to choose my book, and they do. And so I appreciate, you know, them allowing me into their world and to entertain them a little bit. Yeah, someone writes a bad review, do you go after them? I don't read reviews. <laughs> oh, you don't. You don't even look at. Oh. Them. Nope, I don't even look at them because I know what they'll do to me. I gotta save my, I gotta protect my space, Al. I gotta protect my space. <laughs> and protecting my space means not, I don't read the good ones or the bad ones because I just don't want to, um, I, I, I know that the first, any bad one that I read will be the thing that I always think about. Um, even if there's a bazillion good ones to one bad, it's the bad that I'll think about. And I know that things are subjective. And I just say that, you know, if, if it's a bad review, you know, my book wasn't meant for them. And that's okay. But I don't have to read that because I kind of like it and other people like it. So I'm just going to go with that. Oh, geez. I hunt them down and have them terminated. Do you really? Yeah. <laughs> I get them terminated. Are you kidding? I get them blasted. <laughs> How dare you? No, actually, um, no, I used to be stressed about it, but I'm not anymore. You know, really? Uh, I'm, no, I'm an old guy now. I don't care. And, and only that, I found that um, in the early days when you focus on things like that, you focused on sales or you're focused on reviews, good or bad, or that people love me or they don't love me, or, and you start focusing on that, mm -hmm. I think it takes away from the writing. Mm, you know, my focus isn't the writing then. It is, it's being interfered uh, yeah. for me. But I'm 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 just an emotional mess. You know, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm I'm terrible that way because if 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 I'm stressed and bothered bothered by something, then I'm not going to write correctly, or I'm going to write in response to what people are saying, and that's not yeah. the right thing to do, right? So yeah, you know, I, I I'm I'm Madonna. You like it or you don't. Mm -hmm. you know, me I gotta, too. You and me yeah. are both Madonnas. Yeah, Madonna. I've got to, I've got to take that that route, you know, because otherwise, um, I'll be a mess, you know. Mm -hmm. well, you, I, can't, you, you can't make it. I mean, you can't be something everyone likes. Anyone that that's impossible. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. So well, why? that's you, John. Everybody loves. Oh you. no, everybody they don't. loves John. <laughs> yeah, everyone loves John. You know, mm -hmm. they don't. They're not mm -hmm. calling you names like me. Come on, they love you. Oh, I'm sure I've been called names, but oh, what, what they say behind your back doesn't matter. <laughs> 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 well, let's see. Now, um, let's find out about your website or how you do um, market. I guess you'll be in all the bookstores, of course, and of course Amazon and all that, right? And uh, yes. And what is your website? So my website is yasminango.com, and um, on Twitter I am at Yaz a writer um and ig i am author underscore Yaz, so you can find me there and if you look for me on facebook it's just my name and you'll find my page and you can say hello and i'll say hello back <laughs> yeah it's probably not really you you've got someone that does it for you no, i wish i'm not i'm not big at all it's all me <laughs> oh don't have like 15 agents and all that going no, on no 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 that must be nice though i wish because i surely don't want to like come up with things on my own but i yeah i answer back it's me i'd be happy for just one personal assistant <laughs> right oh my yeah. gosh that would wouldn't be that, great wouldn't that be nice 
<laughs> well, it's been a real pleasure. Um, now, uh, the two books out are, of course, Her Name is Night and They Come at Night. And the author has been our guest, Yasmin Ongo. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, John and Al. Thank you. You've been listening to the House of Mystery radio show. To find out more about our guests, hosts, or shows, go to www.houseofmystery.com. Show is over for now. Was it as good for you as it was for me? Well, good night. This has been a production of Something Weird Media. I'll be back in 